family, one people, one plan, one love. Welcome to Soul Call with a Sunday kind of message, whether you're listening to this on Sunday morning or any time during the week or the evening, whenever it suits you on your spiritual path. This month, August, if you can believe that it's already August, our theme is living in the flow. And whether it's summer where you are or it's cooler or it's extremely hot, Living in the flow applies to whatever season and any place in the world where we are. I spent a month with a group of people just last month, actually, in a class that was called Allowing Prosperity and Wellness. And the distinction we were making there was not about getting something or getting to something or, or arriving at a very specific place in terms of our wealth or our well-being, but allowing ourselves to be in the flow of life and allow wellness and wealth and prosperity to be in our experience rather than striving and reaching and constantly wanting more and more. Because when we got to the bottom of what it was we really wanted in terms of our wellness and prosperity, it was about feeling good and having the capacity to do good. And it didn't require as much as a lot of us thought as we went through this class. So when we allowed for prosperity, we began to notice that it was already there. We began to notice where our well-being already existed. And from that place, we began to act in a deep gratitude rather than a place of something missing. So that allowing was really a helpful word for all of us who were in class together last month. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the idea that metaphysicians and new thought people talk about all the time, which is that there's unlimited creativity and unlimited energy in the universe and it's available to us, it's moving through us, it's having its way through us at all times. This idea of unlimitedness is not something that we can actually make bound with our words. The cosmos, the intentionality, the givingness of spirit is not something that lends itself well to our limitation of words. So we try. So we talk about unlimited creativity, unlimited energy, continual connected presence, the all, the source of all, the all is. In religions across the world, in spiritual traditions, there are just uh, as many names for God or source or life as there are people. So we don't work on the name, we work on the idea. What is the idea of this thing? This thing that I find myself living through. I did not give myself my breath. I did not give myself my heartbeat. That was in the original design of coming into form. And what a beautiful design it is. I get to be here. I get to be here breathing. I get to be here with a heartbeat. I get to be here having been born underneath the heart of the mother. I get to be here with my feet on the ground and connecting with the mother earth. So we think about living in the flow. We think about the work of beingness rather than the work of doingness. Some of the work that I do with leaders is something that's called contextual leadership. It's a concept that was developed by a dear friend and colleague of mine, Rayona Sharpneck, who wrote a book called Trade Up, Redesigning Leadership from the Inside Out. And in this book, she talks a lot about how we're working from conclusions that we've drawn and made meaning around what's happened in our lives. We've either drawn conclusions from what we've read, from our family of origin, from our study, from the community that we were in, but we develop conclusions, prevailing ideas, ideas about everything. And these ideas drive our behavior. 
And sometimes these ideas give us desired consequences and sometimes they give us undesired consequences. And what we'll do often is go and change jobs, relationships, places to live, instead of looking at how we're actually being, what the ideas are that are driving our life, what we're immersed in, in terms of our own consciousness. So when we think about that, and this idea of being, I thought of a few words. What if we know that there's unlimited creativity, unlimited source, unlimited energy, and therefore we can allow, surrender to, and have non-resistance as our way. The opposite of that is what we often do instead. We try to stop things from changing, stop things from going in a direction that we think is not the way we want it to go. We try to restrict the flow of life according to what we think our desires are. So instead of allowing, we stopped and we restrict. And then in terms of surrendering, that's a word that's very uncomfortable for a lot of us. Surrendering, surrendering. I don't know, do I want to surrender? Instead of surrendering, we fight, we wrestle, we work with it, we struggle, we strive. There's this efforting, but a level of efforting that's not working with a flow, but working in order to force something to happen. So surrender versus fighting wrestling, forcing. And then there's this idea of non-resistance. Paramahansa Yogananda in teaching yoga with the asanas and affirmations together, one of them is, I think it's for downward dog, it may be downward dog, I'm not positive about that, but it may be downward dog, where the affirmation is, non-resistance gives me peace. Non-resistance gives me peace. But instead of being non-resistant, we resist. We try to subdue whatever is happening in our lives. Whether it's the chaos on the outside, chaos on the inside, chaos in a relationship, some dis-ease or illness, we try to resist or subdue whatever is happening in our life. And as we are trying to restrict and stop and fight and wrestle and resist and subdue, we miss being in the flow. What's happening without all of our effort? What's already happening? Take a deep breath with me. Breathing in, I notice. Breathing out, I notice. Breathing in, I notice. Breathing out, I notice. What we may notice is that life continues to flow. It's flowing in as and through us. And all the things that are happening in the world continue to happen without our attention. And all the things that happen on a universal level happen without our attention. The sun rises, the sun sets, the ocean knows to create waves, the moon knows to rise, the trees know to grow, the seeds know what they are made of and therefore what they will make. The soil knows what to do with the seed. There is so much that goes on in our body that we don't need to control or pay attention to. The heart knows to beat. We know to take a breath. The muscles respond before we can even have an actual thought. Our eyes see. We have fragrance. We have taste. Our ears hear if we have that blessing, both of sight and of sound. And if we have the blessing of an able body, our muscles know how to move us and move us forward. And if we have a different kind of ability, and there are some things about our senses that work differently, what's beautiful about the body is that it accommodates and it evolves and, and it is creative. And the person without sight 
is often said to have extenuated ability to hear and to discern and to notice and to feel. And a person without sound has the ability to see in ways that we might not be able to see. When we're allowing what is without resisting it, we can discover magic, magic that's happening every day. I notice that as I live more in the flow, more in surrender to what shows up, more in paying attention and listening what is mine to do, that there's less and less tension in me. And every time I feel tension, my particular place is in the lower back, this little tightening that happens, I'll breathe into it and say, what is that? What are you thinking? What is the bubble above your head? You're thinking about controlling something, aren't you? You're thinking about controlling the outcome. You're thinking about, is it going to turn out the way I want it to? You're thinking about what's going to happen after that. You're thinking about what will they think of it? What will they think of me? Did I do that right? Did I do that wrong? None of which is useful or allowing or surrendering or being non-resistant. When I let go of the idea that I am in control of everything in the universe and know that the universe moves in the direction of love, of peace, of joy, of beauty. I need to be a channel for that. Therefore, I need not be resisting and stopping the flow and wrestling with it and resisting how it's coming through me in a particular moment when I think, well, that's not the outcome I'm looking for. As I trust and notice, Things that didn't happen for me, for example, things I didn't get hired for, things that I didn't receive, or a response that was different than I wanted it to happen. In every single case, always, there was something greater waiting when I let go and know. It even applies to our physical. Even in the case of something as dramatic as an accident, for example. I had a car accident where I was driving off of a freeway, you're coming off fairly fast, the car in front of me, for some reason, slammed on its brakes as we were coming off. We must have been still 40, 45 miles an hour coming off of this exit. I saw it in a split second that I was going to hit this car in front of me. What I did was relax, and I literally threw up my hands and said, God, that's what I did. And it was so amazing what happened. Because yes, I hit that car in front of me, and the car behind me hit me, and my car was so totaled that it was scrunched, but you know what was reserved? Me. My seat. I was in my seat. I remember taking that first breath after the accident, where time had slowed down for a moment. And when I awoke from that moment of surrender, I looked around, I moved my neck, I could see that I could actually move. I wiggled my toes and my fingers, and I thought, I'm alive. I'm here. And then the woman who hit me from behind was knocking on the window hysterically and screaming and saying she didn't know and screaming and screaming. And I remember really clearly just touching the knob and pushing the button that would lower my window. And I was still trying to catch my breath. And I said, please stop yelling and go back to your car. I'm okay. And she went away. And then the person in front of me came out of their car and was checking on me. I said, please be calm. I'm okay. Just call someone because I don't think I can get out of the car. So I needed to have help. They literally needed to break a you know, door and pull me out of there took me to the hospital, checked me over. While I had some soft tissue damage from the impact, nothing was broken, and I left the hospital within an hour, 15 minutes. My car was totaled. 
couldn't be utilized. And the reason I hold that concept so much is because it was the surrender that allowed me to be one with life and allowed me to be free from the impact and the resistance and the slamming that comes when we tense up from life. So today's offering for you is the idea of allowing and surrendering and non-resistance, being in the flow of life with whatever is showing up and trusting that all is well, no matter the appearance. Have a beautiful week. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. She makes me lie down in green meadows beside the still waters. She my soul she writes my wrongs she leads me in a path of good things and fills my heart with songs even though I walk through a dark and dreary that can shake me she has said she won't forsake me I'm in her hands she sets a table before me in the presence of my foes she anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows surely surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I participation today, you may either sit or stand. Please straighten the back. And look forward from inside the mind's home. Look forward, stretching the vision forward to merge with nature then further to merge with the stars and further to merge with infinite space. From there, gather all the healing chi, energy, love, wisdom, and pull it back, gently contracting into the center of the head and gently close the eye. Now feel the center of the head very easily, shining brightly inside. 
then place your attention to the top of the head and open up, expanding up through the ceiling into the blue sky and beyond to infinite space. From there, gather all the healing, love, energy, wisdom, and pull it down into this space, enveloping all of us. And then pull it into the center of the chest, the heart center, shining brightly, and expand outward to merge with Lisa, myself, loved ones, and everyone with us today, connecting us all heart to heart, mind to mind as one. And from the center of the heart, the heart center, radiate outward again through the body, illuminating the body, a light shining outward in all directions to merge with infinite space. Gather all the healing, chi, love, good information, wisdom, and pull it back, gently contracting inside the center of the chest, uniting, transforming, altering, healing. We are standing in earth, touching the sky. We are the chi, light, in between, and a part of all things. Be respectful of this process. And inside, very quiet, calm, peaceful, The mind is very clear, transparent, the feeling humble. All senses are now inside. From the inside, we are seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting. Therefore, no distracting thought. The mind shines brightly into the heart center and from there radiates outward in all directions to infinite space. At the same time, the mind always shines brightly into the heart, deeply, inwardly. We are merged as one. No boundaries, no limitations. Inside, outside, the same. All as one. Feel the joy inside, so joyful to be connected within this oneness inside and out. The joy moving up into the eyes then very gently open the eyes, relax the hands to the side and smile from the inside out. With great gratitude, give thanks to our chief you, this wonderful, loving, healing energy, wisdom that is always within us, around us, and about us. And to ourselves, thank you. How love. 
Thank you for joining us for Soul Call Sunday. Thank you, Reverend Christie, for that amazing message. Deborah Weisenberger Lippitz for the movement practice and Qigong. And thank you, Amy Steinberg, for putting together the beautiful video to the music Natalia Zuckerman and I created as Seeker 7 and the 23rd Psalm. And we invite you to donate to Soul Call Ministries, and you can do that at soulcallministries.org slash donate. Your contributions help us offer the classes we have coming up. We've got some workshops coming up. Uh, August 22nd will be a one-day introduction to meditation workshop. We invite you for that. August 29th, Dr. Michelle Harkey, whom you might have seen last week on the Wisdom Wednesday, Wake Up With Consciousness Cafe. She's going to teach us a three-hour workshop on the work, the work of Byron Katie. So those will be available at soulcallministries.org slash events or classes, if you look at that drop-down box. But your contributions help us tremendously to assist in feeding people during this global pandemic. There are a lot of people who need our help, need our resources, whether it's spiritual sustenance or food. Uh, we're doing that, we're doing work in the world, writing our love letters to senior citizens who might not be able to make connections with people because they can't get out. And there's more information uh, if you want more information on that, info at soulcallministries.org and prayers. Those of you who, are been, who have been sending us prayer requests, we want you to know that we are here for you at Soul Call. And it's soulcallministries.org slash prayers. We've got a fantastic prayer team who is here for you. And um, we thank you for allowing us to co-create a new consciousness on your behalf. Reverend Christy Hardwick is going to be offering a class starting in August. It's called Body, Mind, Soul Nutrition. And the uh, accolades she's received from the class she just did uh, are, have been amazing. So she's a fantastic teacher. And um, we invite you to sign up for that class. And Natalia Zuckerman and I are doing a, a workshop, a six weeks starting um, the middle of August on songwriting. So get your soul song out. And if you're interested, there's more about all the classes we have coming up and events, soulcallministries.org slash events. Have a really fantastic week this week. Know that we are with you and wherever you, on the, wherever you are on the planet, you are loved. Plan.